Do you have an outdoor teak table that is looking really rough? Mine is looking terrible. I didn't think this was repairable, but it actually is really easy to clean and restore your teak outdoor furniture. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I took mine from this to this, and this makeover starts right now. We bought this table in 2019 and it was originally coated with some type of paint or varnish, but that failed pretty quickly in the hot Tennessee sun. I don't think that it was an appropriate coating for this table. So I'm gonna be reviving it with some teak oil and to start, I'm gonna clean it. But before we get to that, let's hear from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by a brand that I'm kind of in my feels about this morning. I have had a long relationship with this brand. It's the store I went to to decorate my first home from the bath towels to the toothbrush brush holder to the kitchen appliances. It's where I registered for my wedding. It's Bed Bath & Beyond. Were you guys devastated when you heard that Bed Bath & Beyond was closing? I know that I was, but guess what? Bed Bath & Beyond is back and it's gonna be bigger and better than ever because it is teaming up with Overstock. That's right, two iconic brands coming together. So you're gonna have all the products and brands you love and remember from the Bed Bath & Beyond aisles, but now you're gonna have the power of Overstock and all their home furnishings and decor at a great value. You are gonna to wanna to download the new Bed Bath & Beyond app. You can shop all those favorite products you used to shop in the aisles at the store, but now it's gonna be right at your fingertips easily held in the palm of your hand in your phone. The new app has everything you need for every home, every milestone, and every budget. Like you needed another reason to shop, but everything that you buy on bedbathandbeyond.com or the app ships right to your home for free. Download the app today and start shopping. It's Bed Bath and an even bigger, better beyond. That app is gonna be perfect for decorating out here as well as inside my home. But now let's get back to the table. I need to start by cleaning this off and my pressure washer has a nozzle that is specifically made for doing wood fences and tables so that I'm not gonna damage it. If your pressure washer does not have that feature, you just wanna make sure that you turn down the volume or that you use a washer that has less of a PSI. And you wanna use a wide spray nozzle. Most pressure washers come with several nozzles like mine does and you just want to use the widest one available and typically this will be a 40 degree angle. You want to keep the nozzle at least 12 inches from the surface of your teak furniture and you may want to start on the underside of the furniture to get the feel for how strong your pressure washer is and how far away you need to keep the nozzle. You can see my pup is very intrigued by this whole process here. Um, for best results you want to make sure that you use nice even strokes passing over the table completely each time using short quick strokes um, is just going to move the dirt around and create kind of like those bathtub rings of dirt at the end of each stroke. So just make sure that you're doing a nice even strokes. You can see here I was definitely getting the hang of it, but this is what it should look like here. You can't see any of those like bathtub rings and you can see how well this is cleaning. On the bottom here, you see that it has a lot of that residual finish that used to be on the top. I wanted to get this off, so I am pressure washing a little bit closer than I did on the top to clean it because I'm trying to remove all of this at residual paint without having to sand it and it's underneath and people are not going to see it as much. Um, but I don't recommend being this close when you're doing the top surface. The legs here too had some of that paint, but definitely not as much as that bottom strip here. So I'm just pressure washing this as well as the rest of the leg. So this is what it looked like after I let it dry overnight. You can see I did probably get a little bit too close here, but I knew I was gonna do some sanding. So if you're just cleaning it and you're not gonna do sanding, definitely make sure you're doing that 12 inches away from your surface. I'm gonna start with a 120 sandpaper and an orbital sander. I am just making sure that I don't have any of that residual paint or stain, whatever was on there before, before I add my oil. So this is gonna do some nice corrective sanding for me. And I'm gonna link all the products. If you look at that little button that says view products in the left-hand corner, this is a new feature from YouTube. You can just click and shop everything on the video there. And now that I have sanded everything with that 120 sandpaper, I'm moving to a 220 just to smooth it out before I add the oil. 
I did a lot of sanding on the top, making sure that la that looked nice and smooth. The legs, I probably was less thorough sanding because people are not going to be under there looking at that. So it is up to you how thorough you want to get. But I definitely made sure that the top was sanded really well because people are going to be eating on this and looking at it. And I wanted it to look good. Once I finish sanding, I'm grabbing a tack cloth and just rubbing that over the entire surface of the table to remove all that dust before I add my teak oil. After researching what I should use, I decided to go with this Wadco Teak Oil and Stain because it's really easy to use. You can just rub it on and it is not going to chip or peel and wear away like whatever was previously put on the surface. This stuff is specifically made for dense woods, just like teak or mahogany or rosewood, and it's gonna penetrate deep into the wood pores and it creates a rich, warm glow and it's gonna be a hand rubbed finish. This is actually super easy to apply. I put on nitrile gloves because you definitely don't want to get this stuff on your hands because it is oil based, but you just flood the surface with a heavy application. You can use a brush, a cloth, a roller. You can even spray it. Um, I am using a stain pad because it just helps spread it, I think, really well. You don't want to apply this in wet weather, so make sure that there is no rain in the forecast when you are getting ready to apply this. And you want the air temperature to be between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees of Fahrenheit. And this will be a milky appearance in the can and when you put it on, but it will dry to a clear film. You allow that first coat to penetrate for 30 minutes and it mostly completely soaked into the wood. So after that point, you come back in and I did a second coat here, reapplying it all over the table. And then I let this penetrate for an additional 15 minutes. And here's a little cameo of my husband. He is replacing that dead ship laurel you saw in the beginning of the video. Once those 15 minutes are up, I came in and I wiped the surface completely dry with a clean lint-free cloth. After you wipe this down, the surface is going to be ready to use in 8 to 10 hours. This covers up to 600 square feet, so I had a lot left over, and you can periodically reapply the teak oil and stain finish to wood that appears dry, and it'll enhance the beauty and the look of the finish. I also ended up doing the chairs, and it was really great that only the bottom of them were the teak, so it saved me a little bit of time, and I found it was a lot easier to use a brush on the frame of the chairs than the staining pad. This is an oil-based product, so cleanup is going to be with mineral spirits and paint thinner, and make sure you're reading all the directions on the can so that you're disposing and drying everything safely. So just to remind you what the table started off like, it was looking very gray and dirty and dingy. And after about two days of work, here is what it looks like now. I love the way this looks now. I'm super impressed with how easy this was. And it honestly looks better than the day we bought it because it used to have some type of paint on top. And this oil really lets the beauty of the wood shine through. I love that it's an oil and stain in one because it just really amplified the wood grain. This is the color graystone, but it also comes in three additional finishes, hazelnut, jacko bean, and flagstone. And I'm pretty embarrassed to tell you that I did this project several, several months ago. It just took me this long to get it up on my channel, but I took some shots of how it looks today. So it has withstood the summer heat, the rain, the sun beating down on it, and it still looks great. So I definitely recommend this product. If you have an outdoor teak table, it was super easy and it looks great and is holding up really well. Thanks for joining me for today's project and thank you to Bed Bath & Beyond for sponsoring today's video. Check out some of my other makeovers before you leave. I have some other table makeovers for indoor tables if you're interested in that. I will be back with another project soon. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.